Hey guys, thanks for tuning in, and for those who came over from the first part, welcome back. I prepared five pieces of carbon steel here. They are all polished up with a metal brush, and to get rid of any oils and residues, I cleaned them with some steel wool and soap. We will make five experiments in total. For the first piece, I will be using spray paint, um, as suggested from Michael Meinl, or Michael Meinl. The second piece will be Onur Akdat's idea of using Plasti Dip Spray. I will start off with those two experiments, as those require electrochemical etching after the engraving, as I want to follow Absalom's suggestion of electrochemical etching by submerging the piece entirely in a bath of salt water, instead of swiping it with a Q-tip. The spray paint and plastic dip pieces need to be kind of insulated all around against the applied current later on. We only want to etch the actual engraving, not the entire piece. Therefore I apply the Plasti Dip all around the piece in multiple thin layers. But as I want to see if it makes much of a difference, I decided to only cover the front with the spray paint uh, on this piece, because it would save you a lot of work and time when you don't need to cover the entire thing in paint. So I want to try out what works best. Now I let the samples dry for around two hours. Uh, in this time I prepared a little logo I want to engrave onto the steel. Okay, so for this case I need the laser to evaporate the paint everywhere I want the salt water to come into contact with the steel. I filled the letters and logos with black, so the laser does not only cut out the outlines but the entire writing and logo. I choose the engraving option at around 50% power on the laser. For this occasion I mounted the laser bed the laser came with, as for small objects it simplifies aligning. The spray paint looks pretty good indeed. Crisp lines and high detail. The Plasti Dip, other than my expectations and worries of shrinkage, makes a pretty similar result. Even there is some soot on the top here, caused by the airflow of the fan in the back of the machine. The lines are crisp and not at all distorted. Pretty nice. Let's go over to the etching process. I am making a salt water solution by simply dumping as much salt into some hot water until it stops dissolving. As the working pieces are covered in paint, I don't want to use an alligator clip to hook up my bench power supply. So I came up with the idea of using two small magnets where I sandwich a ring cable shoe in between. So hooking up the steel piece is as simple as snapping on the magnets. As a cathode, I use a bolt to weighten down the negative alligator clip into the solution. I apply around 5 volts with 3 amps to the experiment and let it run for about 5 minutes. So both experiments have etched pretty well. As you can see here, the Plasti Dip bubbled up on some spots. I guess this is because of gases that build up underneath while doing the etching. Let's hope that this does not compromise the result though. Now it is a matter of cleaning off the spray paint and Plasti Dip. For the second it is supposed to be a matter of simply pulling off the skin-like film. Wow, this comes right off, like a charm. Very impressive. For the spray paint I need to use some acetone to wipe off the paint and that comes right off as well. Now both pieces look absolutely perfect. The etching on the Plasti Dip part, however, seemed to be a bit better, but I think this is due to the fact that I rastered that piece twice with the laser, so that every tiny bit of paint residue inside the letters had been burned away, what isn't the case with the spray paint part, 
but um, that has nothing to do with the paint product itself, but more with the way I had processed it. As I said before, I only covered the front side of the spray paint piece and that actually caused the edges on the back side to be eaten away. Comparing to the plastic part that was entirely covered, you clearly see a difference. Interesting. As a first conclusion, both products work pretty well. But considering PlastiDip to be way more expensive and harder to get by, the only noteworthy difference to regular spray paint is that you pull off the film instead of using acetone, what in my opinion is not really worth it. However, there are certainly materials where PlastiDip brings advantages due to its gentle way of removing it. The etching bath with the salt water Absalom suggested is working excellent and for me from now on becomes major part of process when it comes to engraving metal. So thanks for that. Now, pretty interesting experiment so far. Both results are practically identical and get 5 out of 5 thumbs up from the man cave. I hope this answers your question, Onur, and Michael, thank you for the suggestion. It really does work perfectly and is probably the best way of masking in this case. Let's move on with experiment number 4. Using cheap toothpaste for engraving onto metal. I made myself a toothpaste applicator for spreading it evenly all through this piece of steel. I will layer on a 0.2mm coat of toothpaste before engraving it in 3 passes with about 80% of laser power. Now does the toothpaste have the magical ingredient to mark metal? Let's see. It seemed to really engrave something, I can even feel a ever so slight ridge here, but at a closer look it remembers me of my first metal engraving video, where I was able to mark a piece of steel, but it came out that it was only the oxid layer. Even I used a steel brush on a drill press, there is still a oxid layer on the part. As a control I engrave another piece of steel, this time without adding anything. Yeah, this came out similar to the one with the toothpaste, so I suppose that the toothpaste does not do anything, or does it? Let's try something else. Even as brass has a higher melting point, I'll try the same procedure just out of curiosity. Maybe the chemical composition of brass gives another result. But no, nothing at all on the brass. So ECV Duco, maybe I have the wrong sort of toothpaste. If you see this, please let me know in the comments uh, what you use and uh, how thick you lay it on on the working material. It would be interesting to know and to experiment more with it. By the way, if you like this video and the experiments, there are a lot more to come and a lot already there. Just go to my channel, subscribe and check out my whole playlist of laser related videos and other projects. Now the experiment I am looking forward the most, as this spray has been shown off a lot on the webs. Dry Moly Loop Spray. I give it multiple coatings and let it dry for around 20 minutes before I blast it three times with the full throttle on the laser. Now this looks promising, very clear lines, almost like a laser print. Let's rub off the excess Moly Loop with some acetone and see what we have. Well, this result looks the same as the toothpaste experiment and the control. Hard to say if it did something more. Hmm, now let's try it on brass. Okay, there is something. I will polish it up and get rid of any spray residue. I can clearly see the logo, even it is pretty hard to make this visible on camera due to the reflection, but um, there is definitely something. I don't feel any rich and it is not engraved, but it has clearly marked. That's pretty promising. Now you will ask, why aren't you trying aluminium? Well, that's because I'm out of aluminium. No, I'm just kidding. Let's try aluminium. If dry moly loop marks brass and steel, aluminium should be an easy game, right? I coated this piece with four thick layers of moly spray and as all the others, I give it three passes with the laser. Now this looks awesome, probably the sharpest and crispest marking my laser ever spit out. Let's get rid of the excess with some acetone. Oh no, oh no, it comes right off. What? Now guys, if I do something wrong here, please let me know in the comments. This is disappointing, why is this not working? 
I will call it a day on this. Maybe one of you comes up uh, with a hint, but for now this stuff falls back on the last place. I'm so disappointed. No thumbs up from the man cave at all. Now as a conclusion for me, it is clear that when I want to make a good looking fairly deep engraving on metal with my K40 laser, masking with regular spray paint and etching by submerging it into a saltwater bath is the way and the only way to go, as every spray, paste or mush will always, without exception, if at all, mark metal but never engrave into metals. The K40 is not and will never be powerful enough to engrave or penetrate metal, but that's okay. It is not designed for that and yet still I am impressed that with a few simple ingredients and tricks you'll be able to etch metal and use the K40 to help you of making those etchings look professionally machined. With this said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I see you in the next one. Please subscribe and ring this little bell. Until then, see ya!